Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's All Go to the Trailers. I am Brandon Jones, your host. I'm joined by Mr. Kyle Bosman. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Ryan Stevens. How are you? I'm good. Was that a clinical opening? Did you like that? Clinical. That was very, that was, that was very formal. My brain was searching for jokes. I just couldn't come up with one. Well, we're here again. It's another week. Um, I am off jury duty. Thank goodness. The Woo! trial ended today. So uh, uh, no no fear of the show not happening next week. Hopefully, I'll be on GT time next week, huh? Please. Um, but uh, I've wrangled these two jokers together uh, in my office to watch uh, three of what I consider the most thought-provoking trailers of the week. And we're going to grade them and chat about them and show you some other clips you guys should check out. So let's get started. So right off the bat, I want to talk about Call of Duty Ghosts. We've already talked about a Battlefield trailer that's very similar to this because it's also DLC um, for a very similar military-based game. This one has more flashy editing, I think, more title effects, um, and goes through the new modes in the DLC um, kind of more like a menu. Uh, and I'm curious what you guys think, if it's better or worse than the Battlefield trailer we saw before. Kyle? I think it is far worse, and I can't explain why. I feel like... Uh, Battlefield put us in the game. Uh, this one is just showing off things that are hard to care about. Do you know, uh, things a player has already seen from this game. Oh, you can throw knives? They could already throw knives. This is, this is the game they've already been playing. I feel like they've been making Call of Duty trailers. I don't know if they have multiple teams, obviously. You know, they've always been switching off between Treyarch and Infinity Ward for making the games. But I've always kind of felt like they do know their audience, and they have a giant audience. I know the numbers have been a little fractured since the next gen stuff to kind of really put a, a cap on it. Uh, so it's interesting what you say, Kyle, about like how they're showing people what they already know, but sometimes people I think just want to know, people want to know what they already know sometimes as well, if they <laughs> okay. mix it in. I, I'm not joking entirely. Yeah, no, with, I know uh, Mixed in with like seeing the new stuff. Um, I know it sounds a little silly, but I, I, I think they kind of know what they're doing. Um, and they've, they, like I said, they've been doing this for a while. I think, uh, I think it's an okay trailer. Was was the uh, Battlefield episode? Was I there for that, or was that Bloodworth? Because I, uh, I am completely blanking what you're talking about. That was about. Blood, I think. Oh yeah, with with the uh, hovercrafts and yeah, all that okay, stuff. Cool. yeah, okay, because I, I honestly could not remember. But I don't know. Like, uh, I, I really think it is speaking to a particular audience. I know we had this kind of conversation with the Smite launch trailer, but I think this is actually a bit better. Um, and uh, you know, people like to dog on uh, in on. The COD stuff. Oh yeah, the aliens. Uh, but I, I think this is this is decent. By the way, how crazy is it that this is the same game we're watching right now? The same DLC. Not yeah. even just the game, but this extra stuff that they're adding. It has all these different modes. A little predator tease at the end. Yeah, I mean they've been. At, I mean they've had the jo jo John Romero, George Romero. Who's the George Romero? George Romero yeah. and like what Buffy the Vampire Slayer were in the games in the past. Yeah. And they've always had zombies like tacked on. Yeah. The the predator thing is just odd, but. I guess nothing really shocks me anymore. Well, what <laughs> I'm I, dead on the inside. What this trailer made me think about is, first is the, the difference in tone from Battlefield and Call of Duty. Like they're both military, they're both modern, but Battlefield I think maybe takes itself more seriously, is more centric on actually recreating the Battlefield experience. Like we're gonna take you into the Battlefield and not do any titles or anything so you can really understand the give and take between these vehicles, the kind of crazy circumstances you can get in. Whereas Call of Duty is just like, eh, Call of Duty, woo! You know, like, that's why they pick a popular yeah. song. They're like, oh, let's get, you know, uh, uh, what's the song that they this they is a, from? This uh, is, so this is actually part of what bothers me. It's the same Eminem song they used for, like, the original reveal trailer. They probably right. paid a lot for that, and they're yeah. trying to get their money's worth. But, like, in terms of, like, showing us what's new, stop using that same song over and over. To me, that's, like, it's, I maybe it's the theme song of Ghost, but uh, it shows nothing new if you're using the same dumb song again. So if they don't have the money to buy a new song, should they just use generic music or dubstep? They're hurting themselves by using the, I'm, the song I'm, again. I'm positive they have enough money to afford some other song. <laughs> well, I'm just, I mean, I know they have the money to spend, but is yeah. it smart money to spend is my question. Like, do you, do you think the trailer would be better and you think more people would end up buying it if they had picked a different piece of music? I think the trailer would definitely be better. I can't promise more people would buy it. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's kind of like, Kind of along the lines of what Ryan was saying, how good does this trailer need to be, and how much could it just be like, here is specifically what you'll get for this DLC you already bought because you got the season pass. I like the editing in this trailer. Do you? Uh, I would score this trailer highly. Um, I, yeah, I think well from an editing perspective, if you're an aspiring editor out there, 
Um, listen to the music, listen to the beats of the music, and pay attention to not just the cuts, meaning when one shot moves to another shot, but all the little beats of, like, you know, uh, weapons being reloaded, uh, you know, when they're actually fired versus when the, uh, when the shot actually hits one of the soldiers, explosions and stuff like that, they're all, they all move to a beat, uh, the sound effects kind of transition between the different songs that they use, it's, they, they have really good production values in all the media that, that Call of Duty does. Uh, so I would at least give it all a 7.7 .7 just because it has great editing. Wow. I'm curious what your score is. I love, though, yeah, I love having the Brandon perspective for moments like these. Uh, again, like I'm, I'm rating the trailer on like how well it accomplishes what it sets out to accomplish. That's what I want. They, they had a guy light a volcano. He made the volcano explode, and then like a couple of little tennis balls fall out of it. Three point nine. I'll give it an eight. I think it's it's pretty well done. Coming up next is a game I know we haven't talked about, a game I haven't really talked to you much about, Ryan, and you've seen this game or played I, this game? I got game? to see a, like a 45 minute demo. This is um, Middle Earth, not Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, because it doesn't actually mm -hmm. take place during the Lord of the Rings saga. Shadow of Mordor, just one shadow. Some people call Shadows of Mordor, it's just one. Is it Castlevania Lord of Shadow or Lord of Shadows? I think it's Shadows. shadows. There's multiple shadows there. There's, see, he's the Lord of many shadows. The shadows are his subject, where this character himself is the lone shadow of Mordor. Well, the shadow is, you kind of see who the shadow is here, perhaps. Yeah, lots of sadness. Definitely a God of War vibe I'm getting from this, where it's just like how, you know, they're, they're all dead. How sad is that? So you definitely want to want to fight for this guy. But um, is there any teases in here? Anything uh, about the story that you know that uh, they're kind of giving away here? Well, I mean, the, I think the thing here is that you and the, 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 the Wraith are kind of intertwined, but he's still his own personality, and they won't really get into that all so, so much. I mean, this game has so many cool things going for it. Like, the you know, there's like org charts for orcs and lots of weird character interaction. And like, we saw orcs like throwing a feast and that if that orc throws his feast, he'll gain Reputation, and you could totally ignore it, or you can get in there. I like I like simulation a lot. That's cool, yeah. But on the other hand, like even if you're not a die-hard like Lord of the Rings fan, when someone's like all of this, I, I've said this before, but they're like, there's only so much real estate in the timeline you can carve out, and they're like, what if stuff was going? What if human settlements were in Mordor between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings? And it just feels like it, it, it rings false. Right? Well, like it is a false. Fun, I mean, on a real it, fundamental level. That, yeah, that's a problem that I have with it is because I know deep down that, that it was only created to try to do something. You know, it was just them sitting in a room tearing their hair out, being like, "What other story can yeah. we come up with?" I mean, and this is a, I mean, this is a cinematic trailer, and oh, I, I didn't get to the pre-order bonus. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's good that they are acknowledging that they're having a serious plot stuff, but I think I think they did the smart move with releasing the gameplay before they released this. I think the gameplay is definitely what's really going to hook people. Really interesting stuff going on. Uh, still curious to see how it's going to do on current gen stuff. Is since there, next gen games. Is there any this. kind of a Groundhog Day mechanic going in the game? Because he wakes up a lot in the trailer, which makes me wonder what they're what they're trying to get at there. No, um, there's no like weird absolute time thing, but like you can't really die. That's one of so the do you things. think every time he dies, he wakes up again? Is that what they're trying to do? I think it would be more like the, the Wraith would probably take your mortal form and put it somewhere. Uh, the thing is, anytime an enemy kills you, they gain a level. So... Oh, interesting. Which is, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. Um, that's some next-gen stuff right there. You're saying there's no next-gen games. I mean, that... But this is getting released on current-gen as well. Oh, uh, well. So, I'm just curious. Um... What do you think, Kyle? You haven't talked a lot about this game. You, do so, you like Lord of the Rings to begin with? Uh, like I do. Brandon, I have a question for you, basically. Ooh. Is can can we knock a trailer for have if the game has bad facial animations? Sure. Yeah. I basically, mean, I'm appalled by these <laughs> facial animations. That is so bad. Well, he's dead. I mean, he's a walking corpse. So there's that. <sighs> I don't know, man. I so CG is excuse. actually the perfect look. It's well, like the Polar Express movie. What's but it's dead really children. tough. I mean, you think about all the Last of Us trailers. Like those relied mostly on you staring at these people and, and discerning their emotions. Uh, the Ellie Noir trailers were, you know, uh, hung their hat completely on the facial animations. So, yeah, I, I think it's really a fine line of, you know, do we want to just tell a story and make you, like, empathetic of these characters, or, or like, no, we really want to make this realistic. Um, and you, so you're saying this is not an engine? It, I get kind of an engine vibe. I'm sorry, I, it's, just, it's like cinematic, most of the stuff's like cinematic, though, stuff. I mean, that, that stuff there was looked like it was, uh, you know, like, well-placed camera, bull shot, game angle stuff. But you know, it's it's a typical third person. So oh, and this is game. On, this is my least favorite. I did a final boss one about that. Just the pre-order now at the end of your trailer, turning it into a commercial. 
what once was like this nice like uh, introducing us to its vibe. Yeah, especially the story trailer that kind yeah. of brings you into the world, and at the end, it's like you know it's a game, right? Okay, and end trailer now, and you're like, oh, yeah. thanks. Send <laughs> us money, please. Like, oh gosh, come on. The magic is kind of kind of dead. Um, yeah, I like uh, knowing the story, uh, but yeah, you I don't know you, you bringing up the facial animation. Uh, Kind of maybe drop this down a little bit. But it's it. like it's not the trailer's fault. The animation's bad in the faces, right? I don't know. It depends on who made it. Yeah. Depends on if <laughs> yeah. they made it internally and, yeah. and conceived. You know, we're creating these cinematics, or if you know they just made a bunch of cinema stuff, wrote a script, and then gave that to a trailer production company. Right. Um, in that instance, then yeah, it's not their fault for you know for putting it together. Um, but I for for me the big thing is. Okay, if it's it is Lord of the Rings, but it's not. So like I, you know, I'm supposed to play it because I like that era, but it's not in that era, and so I think the story thing is the one of the biggest things that they're going to have to sell. And so in that regard, I think it was it kind of under underwhelmed me. Uh, I give it a 6.8 because I don't think I'll be playing this game, and I like RPGs and I like Lord of the Rings, but I don't know if I'll make time for this. Wow. Oh, I'll give this one a, a 4.9. I think it's a very average trailer, and I think it is just point one less than average because of the bad facial animations. Uh, I'm gonna give this a seven. I think it's it's still pretty good. I think it's dealing with some some rough stuff. Uh, in the whole, like I already said, I think they're handling the rollout of this, other than the the pre-order tag at the end, uh, fairly well. Um, I like how it's dramatic, but it's not melodramatic with everything that's going on. Which a lot of stuff, when they try to grab you for the two minutes, sometimes it's not really handleable that well. And, oh. it, and it is quick, it's only two minutes, so it doesn't like drag yeah. out the story. I wanted to actually talk about one specific thing I love, is when he puts his sword back in its sheath on his back, so it's like a half sheath. A thing that always really bugs me about Zelda, any Zelda basically, or 3D Zelda, where Link is putting his sword back in the sheath, it's like, that'd be really hard to do because of how long his sword is. And it's just a really quick animation. So this guy's got like a half sheath, and you basically you see the whole animation of him putting it into it, which I think is really cool. But still, you give it a four point four point eight. Yeah. <laughs> but you give the sheath. Sheath eight point nine. <laughs> last trailer is a little bizarre, but uh, really jumped out and grabbed me when I first saw it. Um, and specifically because I I have a lot of problem with trailers that just show gameplay. I'm like, come on, you gotta do something else. Sure. But for me, I thought this was the perfect way to debut this game. I think this trailer wouldn't be as effective if it had titles explaining what the heck was going on. I kind of like just staring at this and feeling perplexed. What do you think, Ryan? This seems like your kind of game. Uh, I, I like the look a lot. Um... I don't know if it is my sort of game. I'd want to mess around with it, and I like, I actually really like that first shot with like the shattered head, but I kind of get the idea of what this is. Well, how do you control this? I mean, do you, do you have any idea just looking at it? Oh, uh, so it's clearly like a, a mobile esque game, yeah? Uh, it's Microsoft Game Studios, isn't it? Yes. So Micro it, sorry, just Microsoft Studios. It now. definitely no feels game. like a Vita game, but so, yeah, this might be. Uh, so is it a Surface Xbox game? Slide. Like, honestly, I didn't do much looking. I, I don't know. That is the point is I kind of don't want to do the research. Like I was just intrigued <laughs> by seeing this and just wondering like, no, what the I, heck is going on here? I mean, I, I'm going to sound like a party pooper. I think it visually looks really cool, but it doesn't look particularly that like the touchscreen stuff. Like, did you ever play that Crabatron game where you're the pinchers and the crabs on the iOS? Like that was fun like four years ago. I don't know. Some of this touch stuff is not really appealing to me. And if it's not touch, it's probably just, you know, Weird pathfinding where it kind of grabs the stuff wherever you go. So, is there anything this that, that they could have done that in the really trailer cool. that could have uh, made you more excited about this game? Well, here's the question: If you saw it, if the camera panned away and you saw someone was playing it on their Microsoft Surface, it's a computer and a tablet and a laptop. I mean, would you be like, uh, Microsoft just gave me seventeen dollars for doing that? <laughs> uh, like, would that made me more or less excited? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it looks cool, and who knows? Maybe with a nice price point or some word of mouth, but. It doesn't seem enticing enough to me at this point. I think we're tapping. I think we're tapping where we want the next tentacle to go. Yeah. It's interesting with the 3D aspect, but it seems like it's kind of locked camera for most of the part, right? So what I kind of like about this trailer is it's it's not a it's clearly not a big game. Uh, one of the first things you do, and like this, this right here, your upgrade powers. It's showing you what the game is basically. You know when it's like eat an eyeball and a challenge accepted, boom, or a challenge completed, boom. Uh, it's showing you what kind of game it is, and that's probably why I thought it was a mobile game at first, is it's like, oh, okay, this is clearly that kind of do challenges, earn upgrades kind of game, uh, whether it's on mobile or not. I'm almost 100% positive this is a mobile game at this point. 
I still like it. I would give it a seven. I just like how it, it just jumps right into gameplay. This reminds me of one of the games that like Justin Spear would be playing and I'd be walking across a capture area and be like, what the hell is that? Mm -hmm. And I think if your game is like that, kind of what the hell is that game? You're doing something, I, right? I think <laughs> something like Darkest Dungeon wouldn't work. You couldn't just jump into gameplay. You need a little bit of uh, context before mm -hmm. you can explain what mm -hmm. you're looking at. Whereas this, I like not having the context. And so that's why this trailer kind of stuck out for me this week. I give it a seven. I think it's uh, fairly okay. Uh, I'll give it a seven point, I think it to seven point two. I think it shows what the nature of this game is off well um, in a non-offensive way. Uh, I like the trailer, I just don't really, and it's not like I hate the game, it's just I don't know if I'd want to play it. I'd give it a seven as well. Nice colors. I thought you were gonna be much harsher than that. No, I just, I don't want to play it. It looks it's a really cool trailer. I'm glad you brought it to my attention because I definitely would have skipped it. That's that's the best you could ask, you know? <laughs> that you weren't skipped. But it's still not gonna make me probably play it. I don't know. We'll see. It's a weird conundrum. Those are our three trailers for the week. Um, also this week, uh, Daylight, which I hope doesn't suck because that looks really creepy and awesome, uh, had a trailer called Somebody's Watching. And I, I did like the text, Somebody's Watching Trailer. It's like, oh, it's probably me. <laughs> if somebody's on. watching trailer, they're talking about me. <laughs> um, but uh, the trailer's called Somebody's Watching. Uh, and it is creepy. Um, it's got that great amnesia. Did I just see somebody run by the window effect that happens multiple times. Also brought to my attention by Mr. Ryan Stevens was a trailer for Pop-Up Dungeon, uh, which just opened up on Kickstarter, which you don't like at all, Kyle. What, uh, what, what issues did you have with Pop-Up Dungeon? So for me, it's just an issue of abstraction. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, what's a Crimson Shroud that came out on 3DS where like you're playing as little figurines in a dungeon as opposed to actual things in a dungeon. This is the kind of same kind of thing. You're playing as pa a paper representation of a dungeon. Uh, too much imagination for my sorry brain. So you don't like Tearaway? Uh, Tearaway takes place within a... T everything that happens in Tearaway is in Tearaway. I think Pop-Up Dungeon is most meant to represent our actual dungeon. You're playing the paper things that represent it. Look, it's a whole thing of my own little... I can't deal with that abstraction of, like, double imagination. Double It cancels it out. Yeah, it's like a... It's like okay. a, a it's card like math. Game. Yeah, it, well, it's like playing a card game inside of a video game is hard for me. Oh. Ah. But you're okay playing Pokemon trading card game on... Game Boy Color? Yes, be okay, because there's no abstraction there because you're playing right, a character right, right. who is actually playing okay. that game inside that game. Look, mm. it's a great trailer. It's honestly, Pop-Up Dungeon's a great trailer. Trailer of the week. <laughs> well, it's it, it's a trailer you should check out just because um, it explains the whole thing in one trailer. It kind of has to like start you off with a game you've never heard of before, and then by the end of the trailer, convince you to buy it and explain to you what they want to do. Not buy it, but Kickstarter. Or Kickstart it, yeah. Yeah, and, and it actually, as opposed to most Kickstarters, it looks like they have a clear plan of what this game will look like and be, and you know, it seems like you could safely Kickstart this one. So if you want to throw more money at video games, go check it out. <laughs> um, also, uh, I know you don't like isometric games, but right. uh, uh, the debut trailer came out for Shadowrun Online, and uh, it is very not exciting. I think they could have, <laughs> I think they could have uh, spiced that, up that that's gameplay a little bit more. Yeah. It's fair. just, it's very dull. If you're totally into Shadowrun, then you'll probably be excited. But uh, trying to sell the outside crowd, I think it was a little, <laughs> little mild. Um, and man, as I'm looking at this list, these are not really good trailers this week. Oh my was gosh, any super, what is trailer of the week Is there any week? super hot trailers? I'm looking at, you know, I always... Is this a bye week? That knack trailer for uh, PlayStation All-Stars. That, that was a hell of a trailer. I know some of the animators who worked on that. It was short and sweet, but mm, was that a good trailer? Uh, um, maybe Tentacles, right? Uh, boy, I don't know. Probably Middle Earth over... Middle Earth tried a little bit more than Tentacles did. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Call of Duty Ghost is really generic, and I, I hate giving it to Call of Duty because they make those trailers all the time. Like, it's a good trailer, good, though. They're good at it. Yeah, nothing but, really got my goat. Goat Simulator. Oh, 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 I gotta mention. Oh, sorry. Uh, goat Simulator. Totally forgot to yeah. show you guys uh, oh. the Goat Simulator launch trailer from last week that made fun of Dead Island. Um, it had the goat going through a window, and then it goes through the window on the opposite side of the room, and then through a you know farmhouse, and then through and stuff. Uh, and a lot of people were in the very comments. angry with me on Twitter in the comments <laughs> that, we, that we didn't mention that. But that was our first major trailer faux pas, which I feel pretty good. We've been trailer kind of uh, uh, shown the best of the best so far. Um, so I don't know, maybe we should just give it to Goat Simulator uh, out of respect. Um, maybe Middle Earth gets uh, the silver medal. Um, but uh, yeah, Goat Simulator, that makes it easy. Because all the other trailers this week smell like goat shit. Um, <laughs> Whoa! Just mellow trailers. Whoa. Yeah, I get, they get the goat shit score. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get some better uh, trailers. 
Uh, and uh, definitely check out, there's lots of April Fool stuff, of course, uh, this week because we had April Fool. So lots of silly April Fool's trailers, so check those out as well. Uh, check those out as well. And before I uh, completely stop my ability to speak English, I'm going to wrap up the show. Thank you very much, Ryan Thank and you. Kyle, for uh, hanging out. And we'll see you next week. Stay tuned. <laughs>